Go ahead. All right. Number one, is the pitcher good back there, Austin? Or okay. Um, always turn the power off. We already went over that. Um, multiple ways. If you're working in somebody's house, they're probably not going to have a throw switch where you can. What's the system called? that you guys learn about in OSHA to, to make sure somebody don't turn the power back on on you? Lockout, tag out, yes. Um, of course, in somebody's home, you can't do that. But yes, you'd want to make sure the breaker was off or the main breaker, depending on what you were working on um, for safety. Um, when wiring a blank circuit, the Romex wire must be 14-2. 14-2 is the white. So what size breaker would you hook this to? 15. 15 only. Okay. That's all that you can hook this to. Not a 20. That's too much. Okay. Um, so a 20 amp breaker is hooked to what size wire? If four, or 15 is hooked to 14. Two. What is... The other hook to a 20 amp, the next size. What is this wire size? 12. 12. Okay, so 12 2. Um, and, and it would be the same way for commercial, it would just be individual wires, but that size of that wire still counts. And pretty much everything that's commercial would be 20 amp anyway, uh, at least minimum. Um, so, what size wire do you hook to a 10 amp? Or I'm sorry, 10 to what, what amp breaker do you hook this to? This is 10 wire. 30. 30, okay. So what would hook to a 40 amp breaker? Eight. Eight. And this keeps going by two. Okay, so that's important information. Um, all right, when you're mounting your electrical boxes, um, you need to leave them stick out how far past the framing? What does the face of this box have to be within? Well, you're sticking it out, well, it's about 3 8 if you're using half inch drywall, and that's what these ears are, about 3 8 But it's gotta be within eight, an eighth inch of whatever material you're covering. You can't always just leave them stick out three-eighths of an inch, because what if you were putting some kind of wood on a wall or, or paneling? You, when you put paneling up, you don't just put paneling up. You put drywall normally or a backer of some sort and then paneling. Some people just use OSB. Um, but, so you'd have to leave this sticking out even farther, right? So you couldn't really use these notches. You'd have to measure each one. Um, within one-eighth of, or shorter than the material being covered. Of course, you wouldn't want to leave it sticking out farther than the material because then your wall plate is not going to be tight to the wall. And an inspector goes around with a little thin card, and if he can slip that card anywhere around um, your cover from that to the wall, it doesn't pass. Okay, so them have to mount flat to the wall. Um, if there's a gap there, it does not pass. Okay. So that's important that these are mounted. That all goes back to how these are mounted. Um, I've seen times where you'll mount them good, you get it wired, you put your drywall up, but that stud sometimes, because when you're buying lumber, it has a moisture content in it. And sometimes once you put the heat to a, a new house or a new addition and you get heat to them, then that stuff starts drying out and, and a stud will twist. Well, if it, this is nailed flat to a stud and it's a stud twist like this, this portion might be sticking out past the drywall then. Then you gotta go back through, maybe with, you could use a belt sander, that's one thing nice about a plastic box, and you could grind a little bit of that off that was sticking out, or you could cut it a little bit, um, but it can't be sticking out. And that happens sometimes even though you've, you've got them mounted good, um, you gotta play with them a little bit. Um, number six. Any metal, or I'm sorry, it's metal. Any metal electrical box must be have a ground attached to it. Um, re remember that it doesn't matter what kind of metal box it is. 
whether it's your panel, which that's done through that grounding screw um, in your ground wires, but any metal box, if it's metal here, it ha the wire has to attach, the grounding system has to attach right to the box with a separate screw. Um, you can't use this screw here that's pinching down on your wires. You have to have an individual screw. And a couple different methods, I know some of you may have used these, and they're ones that you can buy made up, attach this, and then you wire nutted all your grounds together, right, and left a pigtail off to hook to your device. That's one way of doing it. Um, you can also just use a screw, a grounded, grounding screw, you can buy these, green, um, that threads into those. And then the wire that you got coming in here, wrapping that and then extending it out and actually hooking right to that same wire. You don't have to have an individual wire. Sometimes this makes it easier though. Um, this thought I'd throw this out there, it's not really in the questions, but does anybody remember the name of this? What this is called? Where do we have to use these? A metal hole, right? You can't just run a wire through a metal hole. It has to have a way to clamp it down. This particular box, there's a Romex connector mounted on there somebody put on, but you can use these. It has the knockouts and the clamp inside, but it has to have a way to clamp down on the wire, um, whether it's a panel or a box like this. or um, Some of you may have can lighting in your house. Have you guys ever seen can lighting before it's installed, how it looks? It's a type of metal box, and, and that, again, you'd have to use a Romex connector on to hook your wires to it. Um, number seven, holes drilled in electrical, or for electrical wires must be in the what? Of the stud or plate. Where do you have to drill them? Right in the middle, right? Same way you would staple, right? Huh? Middle, center, yeah, either one. Okay. Um, staples should be placed so that they cover blank the wires, all the wires, right? Remember, you can't run a staple and then run another wire over top of that and then run another staple. Okay. All, the staple has to connect all of them. If you can only do three wires on top of each other. After that, I had showed you guys those um, connectors with a nail in it that you can use. Um, but they all have to be connected in the center of the stud, right? Now, if you have a two by six walls, that's a little bit different story. With two by sixes, you can run wires side by side because they're back in enough that you could get away with that. But for two by four walls, you can't do that. Um, you'd have to use those standoffs, that plastic, um, and then the wires just clip in them rather than use staples. With all in the the wires should not what? Should not cover a staple, right? So you can't run a staple, then have a wire over top of that staple, then put another staple. Um, nine, staples should be snug to the wires, but not so tight that they cut or nick the outside coating of this wire. So you gotta watch how you draw them down. You can't just hit them in as fast as you can, not pay attention to what you're doing. Um, so cut. Um, 10, blank wire should be stapled no farther than six inches from an electrical box that they enter. And that's with plastic, right? All wires have to be stapled within what? How far can they be? Maximum. So six, inches. six inches. Ten from a metal box. And they can be ten because they have this clamp on there, and that's why. Um, some sort of clamp. Um, when stripping the outside coating of Romex at a box, how much of that wire do you leave on? So you got this wire running in this box. And it has to stick out how far from the face? Six inches. Okay, it's got to be stapled within six inches in the center of the stud. But how much of this do you strip off, this outside coating? All but what? 
inch to an inch and a half of that coating left on. So it's inch to an inch and a half. Um, so after you have that, and you're going to strip for your curls to hook to your device, how much of this inside coating do you strip off that wire? Huh? Three quarters, yes. If you strip it three quarters and then you pinch right on the very tip and make your curl, they'll be just about perfect every time. So it's three quarters to an inch. It all depends on how you make your curls, but usually three quarter works really good if you're pinching it right on the end. Um, 14. Wires must be stripped using the correct gauge notch on the wire strippers, right? So if you're stripping 14, and it's solid wire, you need to be stripping it at um, using the number 14 uh, with that on that stripper for solid wire. Um, just two seconds, okay? Just let me finish this up. So this is all on one video. Yeah, just take me a couple more minutes here. Um, 15, um, a blank must be made on the wire in order to make the connection to the screw on the device. So what has to be put on this? A curl, right? Now there are certain devices where you don't make a curl, and we'll kind of go over that a little later. Um, once we get drywall on your projects, you're gonna hook up a different type of device where you don't make a curl. Um, but most, most require it. 16, the curl must be attached to the screws on the device in a what direction? Huh? Clockwise, yeah, clockwise. The curl has to go, so if your curl, say this is my curl on there, that curl has to go like a clock spins on the screw. So remember, side to side device, that changes the direction it's going because you're looking right at the screw and saying it's gotta go on there clockwise. Um, all ground wires must be fastened together in an electrical box using a wire nut. So what do we call that? Because we need one lead coming off to hook to the device. So what do you call that when you fasten them all together and you leave a wire sticking out to hook to something? Pigtail. Um, you guys haven't ran into it too awful much in here, but a little bit when you did your three ways. Sometimes you have to pigtail whites and blacks, depending on how you're hooking things up. That stuff all, always has to be color coordinated. So if you're pigtailing blacks, you have to use a black lead. If you're pigtailing whites, you have to use a white lead. And same with the ground. Or if it happened to be a red. Um, ground wires having a single wire lead to attach to the, okay, we already said that. It's got one single lead, um, 18. Um, Wires are attached together using a what? How do you attach them together? We already kind of talked about that too. Wire knot, right? You can't just twist them together or wrap tape around them. It's got to have a wire knot. Um, how many wires, when you're talking about 14, talking about number 20, how many 14 two wires can you fasten together using a tan or yellow wire knot? Well, if you had two, you had two wires, I mean, if you had one, you wouldn't need a wire nut to fasten it together, right? So it's at least two, so the first number's two, but you can go up to four. And I guess what I want to be critical about here is, and I've seen it some out here and I don't like to see it, some people were grabbing red wire nuts when they didn't need a red wire nut. And that's when you use the wrong size wire nut, is why stuff will come loose sometimes when you push it back in your box. And it may not happen right away, but um, we talked about just that little jar of plugging stuff in and out or switching a switch on and off. Eventually, this that little bit of movement will cause stuff to come loose sometimes if it's not fastened right. Two to four. Two to four. After four, then you're gonna have to jump up to a red wire knot. Um, now, 12 wire is bigger in diameter, so of course, you may only be able to get two of them together in a tan wire nut, and if you had three of them, you may have to jump up to a red. Um, I'm sorry, what? What's the wire nut color for that one? Red. 
red is the next size. And they get bigger than that. They have blues, they have grays. Um, they keep getting bigger for different gauge wires and, and different amounts. Um, so I thought you guys, you can shut that off. 